And then the final piece is execution. How will we get the mechanical systems to do what we want and how will we get the human systems to do what we want? Now, well, I'll just click into it. This is all you have to do. Any, any questions? Right? So another complicated picture, right? Everybody's wondering, Connie, how do you live with this guy? What is going on in his head when he's, uh, when he's thinking? So here, here's what I want you to think about in terms of execution. For every goal and objective you put in place, there are two major aspects that you have to deal with. One of them we're pretty good with dealing with. That's the mechanical side of it. Okay? One of them we almost always just completely disregard, <laughs> which is the human side. Right? So let me, give you, let me give you a great example. So we decide to put a family justice center together in your community. And somebody's good enough to donate a, a, a building, right? Or the county ponies up for a building or something like that. So we have a facility, right? And we get everybody to co-locate. So they all move into new cubes from the old cubes that they used to be in, right? And we never get the people to actually change their behavior to integrate their policies and processes, to change the way they think philosophically, and what have we done? We've focused on the mechanical aspects of the Family Justice Center, and we forgot that the change only occurs, that the benefits are only realized when the human beings decide to do things differently tomorrow than they're doing them today, period. This is so challenging and frustrating because most of us have learned to try and drive an organization using purely the mechanical systems. We'll change the process, we'll change the tools, we'll change the location, we'll change the system. Oh, I know what, we'll put some technology in place. That'll take care of it. And what do people do? They either literally or metaphorically cross their arms and basically say, you can't make me. <laughs> and that is true. You can't make them. You can make them wish they had. You can make them wish they had not. You can build all sorts of boundaries around them. You cannot make a human being do something they've decided not to do. All the mechanical tools at our disposal will not necessarily win people over. And here's the really hard part. Even the right answer, saving lives, does not automatically get people to buy into something new, does it? And that seems really odd, doesn't it? But, it, but it's not that simple. So for every goal you articulate, every strategy you put in place, whatever you decide to call them, every one of those begins down here in the corner with something you expect to get. There's some benefit that you're expecting that goal accomplishment to achieve. In order for that goal to be accomplished, you're going you're gonna to focus some time and attention on the mechanical side of it. We need to create something that conceives of that building, something that controls how that building gets built and moved into, and something that makes sure that that building is up and running and ready to go in time, right? All mechanical stuff. And my guess is that you, like most organizations, have all sorts of resources around mechanics. Policies, processes, tools, systems, project managers, departments, the whole bit, to make the mechanical side of this thing come to, to, come to life. And it matters, doesn't it? It does. The problem is benefits are not realized by movement through the mechanical steps. They're realized by movement through the human steps. The other side of every goal and every strategy that you articulate has a human element attached to it as well. And in order for success to be achieved there, there are three things you have to accomplish with the human beings. It's simple and hard. Okay? <laughs> It's simple because there, there are only three things. It's hard because you can't make them do it. First of all, they have to comprehend why the change is necessary. Secondly, they have to commit to the change. And thirdly, they have to be capable of operating successfully in that new environment. Yes. Make sense? Absolutely. Three things they have to do. They have to, and, and, it, and they have to go in this order, by the way. Yeah, they have to first of all comprehend why the change is happening. Why are we moving into this new building? My goodness, now I've got two offices or three if I have to work at the courthouse periodically, right? Why are we doing that? I'll tell you why we're doing that. Women and children are dying in our community. And this isn't about it becoming easier for you. It's about saving the lives of women and children that should not be dead. Well, I still don't want to work out of three offices, right? Well, I know. 
right? So, but given that the cause is greater than the pain for you or for your organization, are you willing to commit to that change? And I'll take them even if it's grudging. You know, even, even if you have to, even if you're dragging them a little bit, that's, that's okay with me. Because you know what, once they get in, they'll be all the way in, right? There's, there's no way you're not changed by this movement. So comprehend, commit, and then the capability to be successful. All right, so now I'm in here. Where's my computer? Where's my chair? Where's my desk? Where are the systems? Where are the technology? Who, when do we work? What are the schedules, right? Because you could have somebody that is highly comprehends and is highly committed, but if you don't give them everything they need to be successful, right, then they won't be, they won't make the change. So there was an interesting comment this morning in the presentation. Who was the fellow that won the, or was the Lifetime Achievement Award? I've forgotten his name. Mark Wynn, thank I can't get his name in my head for some reason. So he was going through all the stuff that the police chiefs agree need to happen. And he said one of the things was training. I wrote on my piece of paper, this is not a training problem. They don't need to go to training. They need to comprehend the change that's necessary. Don't provide capability to people who don't comprehend the change. All you end up with are really well-trained resistors. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yep, went to the training, went to the workshop, very interesting, not doing it. Right? You can't train your way through the human side of the change. You only train people, you only teach them, you only give them the capabilities when they comprehend it and have committed to it. Uh, and I don't mean this literally when I say it because don't ever give money back. But anyway, <laughs> but, but, but the, the building isn't the answer, right? It's the, it's the people are the answer. And if we're not careful, we'll focus all of our time and attention on the stuff that is more concrete and easier to control, the building, the tools, the technology, all that kind of stuff. And we'll leave out the fact that the only time you realize benefits is when human beings com uh, comprehend, commit, and demonstrate capability. Please. Oh, well, there you go. And that was free. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how free it was, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Probably time and time again, right? Yeah. Why do we do that? I mean, why? Hmm. No. It, it is. It is. The reason I think we go right to training is it's the most measurable. Oh. And you've been funny. Sure. Yeah, be, because we think we can train ourselves to success. This is, this is not as concrete. But if we go back to what we were just talking about in terms of strategic planning, right, the comprehension goes along with that vision of the future, doesn't it? The purpose for why we exist. And back to the storytelling, the concrete. We can't do what we have set ourselves out to do without this comprehension.